Hello, hello, welcome to LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. I am Jackson Tyler of AbnormalMapping.com. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's going to jump around. Let's take out the gonk droid. Goodbye, gonk droid. Don't... Come on, let's not be cruel now. Let's. We're going to go back out to the main hub quickly, and we're going to buy a few characters, because I like to stay on top of that. Um... Even though we're not using it, we're not going to do free play until we're done. I like to buy the characters that matter. Oh, Z Zam Wessel. Zam Wessel. Dexter Jetster. There's a two different ones from that planet. They're the only of that alien to exist in <laughs> Star Wars. They look really bad on screen. They look so bad on screen. What are we doing for percentage? How are we doing? 13%. That's pretty good. Let's go into episode 2. Make our way in. Bum, 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 ba, 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 bum, ba, 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 bum, ba, 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 bum. Okay. When I watched the movie, it wasn't actually, it wasn't really clear what Geonosis was. I mean, it was kind of their base, but not really. It had a bunch of those indigenous life forms that were never explained as to why they were there or what they were doing. It like I don't know why they were there because it was their home, but it wasn't like a thing. They didn't seem to be ally allied with the separatists. I mean, they were technically because they were having a big death arena, but like the relationship between them was never made clear. It was very disappointing. That make, they, they could have cut out the entire bit of Tatooine from this movie. I mean, C-3PO wouldn't have been with them, but that would probably have improved the final act. <laughs> That's pretty good. I can't lie. They really do rely on this design of corridor with lights on both sides. Shoot me. Apparently I can't reflect you because I'm bad at video games. Ah, oh, I lost all my coins. Gonna get me again. There we go. There we go. Take me out. I got him. Yeah, they do rely on this, this design of hallway a lot. Good, good, great, well done. I don't think it's too much of a problem because the whole game is kind of this samey corridor that just exists to be pleasant. But it is strange. I need a boy to get up there. That's not to be a good deal. Oh, I can just run on the edges, can't I? Yeah. Oh, they don't let me. I need, I need, I need those though. Ooh, shit. Ba 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 ba. 
Who's that? I need R2D2. I have R2D2 right now. Oof. Need that one good. Hey, R2D2. Let's go back and sort out the thing we need to sort, sort out. There we go, that's made it easier for everyone. Oh, it's a nice little jumping puzzle. We haven't had one of those yet, that's good. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Artie. Do we go down? Yeah, we'll go down and get that stuff. Cool. What's on the end of this one? Which, which I'm gonna go that way first because I feel like this is the proper way that doesn't look like the proper way to me I bet that's just a puzzle room nope All right, let's go what Okay, yeah, this is definitely the right way. Let's go the other way, go to the actual puzzle room. And see what's in there first. Get on. Oh. I made it back there, that's good. The love story between Anakin and Padme in this movie is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. That's fine. I guess just come over here. Like I talked about it a bit in the earlier episodes, but it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Where do I go? Do I wait in it? And that takes me along for the ride? Okay, yes. That's what I need to do. Hey. Like, in the movie, Anakin comes across as the world's creepiest human being ever, not just because everyone is addressing Padme as Milady all the time. Like, so if we think about the plot of their love, what is meant to be the most pure love in the galaxy, the love that turns him evil, the love that creates Luke Skywalker, it's like it's played with this big thing, this big sweeping romance with this uh, big beautiful theme tune that it has that everyone knows. That's the one. Here we go. Oh, this is going to go poorly. Yeah, there we are. Oh shit, there's a thing on the edge over there.
This is why I chose to be RT. Because he's clearly the best equipped for this. Right, let's go out. But Anakin, like, comes up to her and is like, I haven't stopped thinking about you for 10 years. And Padme's like, okay. That's weird. That's incredibly weird. Like, not only does it make Anakin like a creep, it just really just completely um, annihilates his character of any um, I, I need I, I, Padme I need you because you need to do this thing. fine I'm going to jump oh I can I can make it on my own cool <laughs> hey it completely annihilates his character of any real, real depth and believability and like a way to connect to him if say that movie had begun and Anakin like had a girlfriend and I, I know it doesn't the whole thing is that the love is forbidden by the Jedi Order which frankly is bullshit um, hey C-3PO like the idea to me that um, love is this thing that the Jedi Order are all against I just don't buy it all right, let's go. I think this is a room with like a bunch of different puzzles. Well, that was a good bit of framiness. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's like the other room. Everyone has to get over. Okay, but um, An I think Anakin needs to go into the middle first. and get this thing rotating. There we go. Come on board, 3PO. Get three of those. Oh, we made it, good, that's good. Three is the one we need. Good. Everyone else can make it across that way. Nice. Okay. But yeah, if the movie had begun with like Anakin and Obi Wan, and like you actually felt their relationship, because there's the, the the bit in the um, elevator where they discuss that like, uh, excuse me, Master, I saved you from the Nesk of Gundar, and uh, and um, Obi Wan's like, oh yes, no, well, you owe me. Ha ha ha. And that's the only time they even attempt to make you feel that their relationship has any depth. So it just makes you feel like Anakin has spent every single day with zero relationships with anybody, just going, God, I miss Padme. And they barely had a relationship in that first movie because he was like 12 and she was like 16. Well, he was like 8 and she was like 16. And now they appear almost the same age. Like, she's barely aged since the first movie. Uh, and I don't mean in terms of looks, I mean in terms of how they play the character. Like, she is the same person, they don't play her development up at all. Whereas Anakin is, like, clearly a new person. I keep saying, God, you have, you've become handsome in your time gone, I think her, her, his mother says, you know, right before she expires. Can't get up there. Oh, it's a maze. Just run through and collect what I can first. Okay, so. That's the power brick. I need the power brick. Let's um, go through with R2D2. And then it's going to shut me off here. Oh, I see. Oh, that's... Is it, who do I, is it R2D2 again? I should just take the tension there, yeah. Okay, let's go through again.
It's also super gross because uh, Anakin's relationship with Padme in the first film is super maternal. Like, she just comes across as motherly big sister towards him, very protective, very like, oh, you're doing well for a kid. That There's no romantic attraction there, apart from when he says, are you an angel? And then she looks at him like, okay, go away, you four-year-old. And it's just ridiculous to me that you're meant to believe that this character, yeah, Double, yeah. What does that one do? I don't know, it doesn't actually say, does it? Okay. Good job, everyone. Out we go. It's ridiculous to me that you're meant to believe that this character, like, is just super in love with this person so much that they, like, that it causes them pain when you're near me or whatever he says. You could say that the Jedi Order encourages them to love, I believe. That happens. And they could do a lot with that, like, the prequel trilogy ends up being, like, a collection of themes and ideas that are actually really interesting, but they only arrived by accident and they were never intentional. Like, the idea of midichlorians and, and trade federations and everything as, like, a deliberate subversion of Jedi mystical nature and what have you. I mean, they're, they're not, and they don't come across as that, but the, the, the seeds for the idea is there, that they're, like... The whole thing, like the forces midichlorians, and um, everything runs in this like technological system, and the the villain is actually a bunch of uh, like unknown corporate identities that are all shifting, and nothing is really certain. And the Jedi are mostly just like helpers for this government. That stuff could be really cool, but they don't do anything with it. It's, and everything interesting there is like completely unintentional. Or not unintentional, but inadvertent is a better word. Whereas, and I'm, they, that, that could be the same with Anakin's and Padme's relationship. Like, uh, the, the Jedi universe is this universe of. Um, the, the, the Jedi universe, the Star Wars universe, is a universe of. Um, I was talking to, with Matt about this on Twitter, and he, he, he came up with this idea, so he, he, I'm crediting him. But, like, the Jedi universe is a universe of fathers for the most part. Lots of famous plot twists revolve around uh, lots of one famous plot twists revolve around um, fathers and who's the dad of who and uh, like the father figures all around Obi-Wan's a father, f father figure to both Anakin and Luke but for the most part it's fairly light on mother figures except for Anakin's mum and Padme in the first film and the idea that he is like desperate for this maternal love because he's missed his mother so much and he's like attached that to Padme when he sees her again could have been really interesting uh, and it could have played into Anakin's descent and you'd like say and that's why he's like super immature and it could have like you could have done a lot with it they don't do a single thing I'm just gonna leave you hanging there everyone is that cool with you I hope so I need to collect these bits you know how it is. You were doing it earlier. Oh shit, I lost all my bits. I'm bitless. Right, let's go. Come on. Jam, jam, jam. Hey, Obom. What's up? How you doing? I'm just gonna stand here. Bam. Bam. But they don't do anything like that, and that's a shame because it could have been super cool. Because there's so much potential for interesting things in the Star Wars saga that they'd leave more on the table. By the way, I did uh, after my character starts. Okay, that after I um read, after I watched Attack of the Clones, I read uh, like went to the Wikipedia page specifically because the script wasn't written by George Lu Lucas himself, he had a, a co-writer which he didn't have for Revenge of the Sith or Phantom Menace. And it was totally because of the complaints. Like he didn't feel, it was like, oh no, everyone hated the last one, I need to make this one good. Didn't work out so well. But I can, I can see it's a more formally, quote unquote, not bad script that has more of the things you need to have in there to have a good script. But it doesn't, it doesn't make a better movie. I would argue that Phantom Menace is more effective in multiple ways, but uh, 
Attack of the Clones is a more interesting failure. Okay, back to the cantina we go. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I will see you tomorrow as we... What, if, what, is, what do we do? We are... Jedi Battle. Jedi, Jedi Battle? Oh, it must be the... It's a quick note. Uh, the way um, episode 1 is structured, the first three levels are the first 20 minutes of the movie. Here, the f last three levels are the last 20 minutes of the movie. Like, that'll be Darth... Uh, Darth Tyrannus is his name. That'll be... Uh, <laughs> Count Dooku, by the way. If you didn't know, if you weren't up up with it, with the Star Wars names, if you didn't grow up in the early 2000s and so have all the um, expanded universe Star Wars character names in your head, even though they're never mentioned on screen. Key Adi Mundi, what? But that's like that's, this pacing remains true in the movie. Like, this is the halfway mark. Uh, this is like an hour and 20 minutes in, and the rest is just a sprint to the finish. Because the first half of the movie is this love story and this investigation. And the investigation can be cool because Obi Wan Space Cup is going to deliver. You and McGregor is a hero. But anyway, tomorrow we will be back with more Star Wars. Stop playing the fanfare every five seconds game. That's really annoying. You're going to make me hate the John Williams music. And it's good. It's good, I tell you. Don't do that to me. It's rude.